So my first question is, what was accomplished this week at this, what I've been calling the generic extremism summit in Washington, D.C.? Well, not much. I mean, Americans were looking for the president to uh, execute a strategy to defeat radical Islamic extremism, and instead he's lecturing Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not looking for a professor. We want a commander-in-chief who's going to brilliantly execute a decisive strategy that is going to successfully defeat ISIS. I mean, it was a missed opportunity. Uh, this was another chance that the president could have shown strong leadership, American exceptionalism, committing to strong, decisive action to eliminate the threat. I mean, we have Americans right now who are saying they wish King Abdullah of Jordan was our president. Uh, president Obama needs to step up his game. Mm -hmm. uh, it is incredibly important that uh, we have troops right now, as, I'll be damned if we're going to send our troops over in a harm's way and we don't have an effective strategy to win. What do you make of the president essentially saying that the West is somehow to blame for what we're seeing with the Islamic extremism now playing across in Syria and Iraq and of course now into Northern Africa? America has nothing to apologize for. Uh, and listen, you can't, de you can't defeat ISIS if we have a president who's not willing to identify exactly what the threat is that we are up against. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to apologize for. Now is the, is the time for him um, to articulate to Americans, showing leadership, showing the rest of the world, standing up with our allies to defeat an element that if it continues to grow. I mean, December 7th, 1941 was a, a motivational moment in time uh, that had us, resulted us engaging in World War II. We do not have to wait for another moment in, in infamy before we decide to engage to identify radical Islamic extremism and to defeat it forcefully. So clearly you think, and a lot of Americans think, based on polling, that the president isn't doing everything he can to keep Americans safe here at home. What do you think should have been addressed during the summit that wasn't, and how are we supposed to move forward, especially in Congress, with this issue? I mean, the president should be talking less about poverty and, and talk more about uh, his strategy that's going to result in a sleeping ISIS member being on the receiving end of, of a surefire. Uh, having one of those little red dots from one of those Navy SEAL rifles in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, we, we, right now, ISIS, Iran, uh, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, I mean, they're playing real-life war, and our president is playing the card game war. He needs one of those epiphanies where he has resolve and determination to actually mm -hmm. annihilate the threat. But what is going to be Congress's role in this? Because the president has come to Congress, the Senate and the House, and asked for military authorization, and it seems like Republicans and Democrats are on two different sides of the issue now. So what is Congress specifically going to do to do what maybe President Obama is not? I'm happy that the president came to Congress asking for the authorization for the use of force. We have some important questions that not only us, but our constituents are interested in knowing uh, how many troops, what are their skill sets, who is in charge, is that person in charge going to be given the flexibility and resources they need to accomplish the mission, and the authorization that says the president should be able to do everything that's necessary and appropriate. What is necessary and appropriate to this president? We want to know a strategy because we don't want to send our troops overseas if they're not going to win. Well, certainly the American people also want both the president and Congress to come up with a solution to this problem, which is growing by the day. Congressman, thank you so much for thank being you. here today.